Hi everyone, this is uh, NZ Tech Free, and it's my privilege today to actually be producing a video once again for the Clove blog rather than uh, AndroidNZ.net where some of you may be accustomed to seeing me most of the time now. And of course what I wanted to do today was to produce a video showing off this handset here. This is of course the Motorola Razr. Um, and it's as you can see, just a stunning piece of hardware. It's just absolutely beautiful physically to behold. Um, and then the hand also feels really, really great. Um, let's put the screen on there. I guess, first of all, let's just do a very brief hardware tour. Um, as you can see, it's got a stunning thickness. Uh, or we should say thinness, really, in the case of the Razer. 8 megapixel camera with 1080p video capture here. LED flash, a speaker grill. On the top of the device we have a micro HDMI connection port, micro USB as we're accustomed to seeing for charging and data, a 3.5mm audio jack, and then interestingly, apart from the micro SIM slot and the micro SD slot here on the left hand side of the device, the left hand side of the device is adorned by no hardware buttons whatsoever. Um, and just a, a few quick notes, um, this micro SD slot Although stated to only be compatible up to 32 gigabyte cards, is of course actually compatible with the new 64 gigabyte micro SDXC um, specification cards currently only available from SanDisk. Uh, now they come formatted XFAT by default, and that of course won't run on these Android handsets. But when you prop pop them in one of the Android handsets, they'll prompt you to um, format it to FAT32 and then it will work. So just to confirm, my 64 gigabyte card is working perfectly in this one. And if we move to the bottom, again, nothing at all. And then on the right hand side of the device we have the power button. And one thing I actually quite liked about this is this button is actually much more stiff than what I'm accustomed to with either the HTC or Samsung Android handsets. Um, so you need a very definite push to actually awake uh, to waken the screen. And that's actually quite a, a benefit. Uh, it just means you don't accidentally wake the screen uh, when you put the phone in your pocket. For someone like me who likes a long screen timeout, um, that's definitely a benefit. You don't want to be pulling your phone out of your pocket uh, sort of five minutes down the line and seeing that your screen's been active the whole time. Um, and then in an interesting departure from the norm, they've got the volume rocker here on the right hand side. Now in terms of the ergonomics, I know a lot of people don't like the placement of the power button here um, based on feedback I've seen from lots of people in terms of the Samsung handsets. Um, I actually find it quite ergonomic. Your index finger naturally falls to that position when you're holding the hand as most of us would like this. Um, and actually over here where the volume rocker is usually placed is a better place for the volume rocker. Here it's just slightly awkward. Uh, to use the volume rocker, so it's not an ideal placement. And I guess when you look at this amazing kind of 7.1 millimeter thick shell, um, the internals will have dictated the placement of the volume rockers there in order to shoehorn all of the technology into this amazingly thin shell. And <laughs> even more staggering to actually get an 1800 uh, milliamp hour battery in there as well. So I expect that's what's dictated the rather unergonomic placement of the volume rocker keys there. I guess also worth pointing out in terms of the physical design is it's actually quite a wide handset and you can probably see just reflected in the screen there if I turn it on, it does actually have quite a wide bezel and if we compare that to say the Samsung Galaxy S2, if we pop this one on um, if we compare the two of them we can actually see that the bezel on the razor is probably twice as thick as it is uh, edge to edge on the Galaxy S2, perhaps slightly more than twice as thick even. Uh, and that's interesting and I guess some people will find the width of this one a little bit of a struggle since many people commented actually that the Galaxy S2 was already the upper limit of size for them. So just something to bear in mind and to be honest again I expect that uh, the internals have dictated the width of the device here. The screen may not be going edge to edge, but I rather suspect the non-removable battery inside is actually going edge to edge. So that's what I think is in play here in terms of the width of the device. But nevertheless, with that amazing thinness, it just does feel great in the hand. And this little chin at the top here, actually, most manufacturers you'll have seen have had little chins at the bottom. Actually, on the top, I think it's probably better. The weight of the device sitting in the hand is quite nice with it there, and you don't really appreciate the extra thickness of that bit sitting at the top as it does. 
while we're sort of doing a hardware tour, I guess it's worth talking about the screen. Now this is of course uh, a QHD or 960 by 540 uh, pixel resolution screen and it's of the Super AMOLED variety and it's not Super AMOLED Plus like what you will have seen in the Galaxy S2. Um, it's just a regular Super AMOLED. I think Motorola are calling it Super AMOLED HD but uh, that's probably only in reference to the QHD resolution which is an increase from what we've seen in handsets like the Galaxy S2 and most other Androids prior to that with WVGA or 800 by 480 uh, resolution screens. Because it's not the Super AMOLED Plus variety um, that does signify that the screen of the Razer does actually have a pentile matrix. Now I actually mentioned that in the unboxing for this phone at our own blog, um, AndroidNZ.net. But so I just wanted to make some follow-up comments because that was my sort of unboxing and initial impressions. And looking at the device more, I have to say, for me, probably the, the only reasonably significant disappointment is probably the screen. Um, I, Although the pixel density is better than the original Galaxy S, uh, the pentile matrix for me is probably about as equivalent um, as it, to what it was in the Galaxy S. So I find it quite noticeable, um, and particularly fine text becomes sort of hatched and feathered and indistinct in the way that it did on the Galaxy S. And that's mostly a problem when you're in the browser. Uh, for instance, one thing I notice um, at full zoom out in the browser, uh, small text is rendered absolutely unintelligible by the pentile matrix, whereas it's difficult to read, but you, know, you can you can sort of barely make it out on the Galaxy S2 with its true stripe matrix. Um, so certainly the, the pentile matrix, it's there, it can be seen. I actually suspect that people who aren't quite as sensitive to it as I am will find no issue whatsoever with the screen. And it's, I guess, hard to know which camp you're in unless you actually lay your eyes on it. Uh, I guess if you're familiar with the Galaxy S screen, you'll have a pretty good indication. Because as I say, I think they seem to be about equivalent for me in terms of uh, the quality of the screen, in terms of how visible that pentile matrix is and what effect it has on small text. So if you, if you know the Galaxy S screen and you absolutely hated it and couldn't bear the pentile matrix, this is not the Android handset for you. Uh, if, on the other hand, you didn't have any particular problem with the, with the pentile matrix on that handset, um, you're also not going to find it a problem here and you'll find the screen uh, quite an upgrade in terms of what it's like for daily use uh, with its increased resolution. Uh, I guess just moving on from there, just to talk a bit about the speed of operation of this thing, and I have to say, this for me is probably the only Android handset I've found yet that sort of matches up to the fluidity on offer in Samsung's Galaxy S2. Just found, you know, navigating as you can see here through the home screens and when you're using the device and you're in the apps drawer, just everything is extremely fluid and that's you know, really pleasing to see. Um, so Motorola have done a really good job from that point of view. And that's reflected in the benchmarks. Now the benchmarks, um, I've run a whole lot of them today and I'm not going to run through them all again here or demonstrate them in this video review. Um, they will be coming up on the blog uh, and the in-depth review will be running over there. Um, but suffice to say that the benchmarks really did turn out pretty well. Uh, for the most part, sitting at around the level of the Galaxy S2 and that's quite impressive considering we've got an increased screen resolution here to deal with. Uh, the one area really where things fell down a little bit for me um, was in terms of the, the graphics. So if we run NinaMark here you see my last result was about 26 frames per second uh, which is significantly worse than the Galaxy S2 and in fact even a little bit worse than the Galaxy Note which got a score of about 32, 32 um, frames per second from memory. Uh, of course that doesn't sound much increased over what this uh, Motorola Razr is getting, but you have to realise of course that the Galaxy Note is pushing twice as many pictures, uh, pixels. That's, that's actually twice as many pixels as this phone. Uh, in which case, you know, the Razr's result is you know, a bit more average. And as you can see there, We've got 28.9, so we've had a marginal improvement, um, but still, in terms of the 3D graphics capabilities, 
probably nothing to write home about. And you know, whether that affects you or not probably depends on whether you're much of a gamer. If you're a gamer and you want a handset that's going to give you some longevity in terms of being able to play the kind of flagship titles, the sort of shadow guns and so forth that will be coming out uh, in the next year or so, again, that might be a reason to pass over the Razer. But for a great many users, that's going to be neither here nor there. Certainly its graphics card is... Uh, sufficient, its graphics processing unit is sufficient to run none of most of the, the games, even the high-end ones that are going to be out there at the moment. This next next thing I wanted to touch on was just to sort of think about the, the sound quality and the music prowess of the phone and I was actually really looking forward to playing with uh, Motorola's music player. They've had some really good ones uh, of their own devising on their handsets in the past and I've also just found that a bit dis disappointing in terms of the stock player at any rate. I uh, just can't find my music for whatever reason. Um, it seems to be locking up here at the moment. It's not done that for me yet. Uh, but yeah, as I say, it just doesn't seem to be able to find my music at all. Hopefully that little spinning circle there is actually yet discovering my music. Uh, it's just been something I've had a lot of difficulty with. And it seemed like I had to sign up to Motocast and use some PC companion software in order to get my music here, despite the fact that it's already all on the card. And that's kind of disappointing. And I'm not quite sure what the music player is doing there. And hey, look, it actually looks like it's found my music. So it hadn't actually managed to do that before. Uh, so this is an all new experience for me. <laughs> Actually seeing my music here on the phone. So let me scroll down a little bit. Find some music. Go for a bit of rod gab. Let's let it react here, and I guess it may still be indexing the music as I've not actually had any success with getting this far before. It doesn't appear to have picked up my album art, or at least at any rate hasn't indexed it yet. And we'll play a track. Now you can see really slow going, maybe an indexing issue. Hopefully, at some stage, no, we've got a force close. So yeah, I've been pretty disappointed with the uh, the stock music player. It's fair to say. Now yeah, it's just locking up. There we go. Okay, so we're back in business. Um, in my files, I've only put one song on here otherwise, and it's encoded in FLAC, which I guess music fans would please to know uh, the Droid Razor can handle. If you follow down. So here it is playing flat, and this is of course the power amp I'm using, and uh, Motorola have given power amps uh, developer yet another reason to make money by having an inadequate player in the, installed in their phone to start with. Um, but pretty good uh, speaker quality I have to say, and I guess that's something we'd expect from Motorola. It goes pretty loud, and even at uh, kind of near full volume, um, get a reasonable amount of warmth and bass out of the speakers of the phone, and that's quite an achievement for this tiny slip of a thing. Um, in terms of the experience listening to music uh, via headphones or an external amplifier, I have to say I was quite pleased. I guess I've become accustomed to living with not the greatest sound quality in the Galaxy S2 and now the Galaxy Note, which both feature a Yamaha DAC. Um, kind of become accustomed to, uh, you know, a, a little bit lacklustre uh, audio quality having come from the amazing uh, Galaxy S sound quality and this Motorola Razr is definitely a step up from them so the sound was warmer, uh, sort of more more clarity and detail was preserved uh, the bass was much more sort of punchy and enjoyable than the kind of flat dynamics and sound that, that the Galaxy S2 and the Galaxy Note are pumping out um, I mean, 
I still consider both of those hands is actually adequate for people who aren't audio audiophiles, providing you get something really good like power amp, which has you know a really good adjustable EQ and some other settings that can affect the sound quality. Um, so I consider those ones adequate already. Um, with power amp, you know the Motorola uh, Razer is a, is, a, is a great music handset. I don't think many people would have complaints. Um, my ear isn't really good enough to advise audiophiles about whether it's for them or not. Um, but certainly I feel pretty comfortable saying other people, providing they get something like power amp on here, should be quite happy. Um, if we keep sort of on the entertainment theme, we'll think about video. I don't know if I've got many videos loaded on here. In my 64 gig SD card and I had it in here, I had my usual battery of test videos. And I have to say, the stock player is just woeful uh, in the Razer. Just couldn't play, from memory, couldn't play hardly any. In fact, I think maybe only played one or two of my battery of about 16 different test files. Um, so disappointing from that point of view. Uh, I threw Dice Player on there, the market had let me install it, so I was hoping that meant it was supported, but unfortunately, um, Dice Player wasn't working well on this handset either. It's got relatively limited support, but tends to be the best player for any handset it is supported on. Um, I did use my other fallback video player and that's uh, Mobo Player and I actually found Mobo Player really not too bad at all for this. Uh, its software decoding was quite impressive, it was managing 720p MKVs um, quite well. An occasional sort of stutter and hitch or moment where it wasn't quite 100% smooth but for the most part that was actually doing quite well for video playback so I mean great thing about Android if the manufacturer hasn't done something quite right you can usually find an application or a modification that will let you fix it. Um, so that's fixable on here for the most part. Uh, if we turn attention next to the camera, uh, the camera for me was a bit of a mixed bag. Um, so of course it's 8 megapixels, has a 1080p video capture, uh, a range of, kind of settings like you'd expect, panoramic modes, different shooting modes, control over exposure and white balance and that sort of thing. Um, User interface, not as good as some of the other Androids out there, but really, I mean, pretty accessible and, and once you get the hang of where all the settings are, not too bad at all. Um, in terms of the image quality itself, I have to say, adequate, uh, but, but really not, not a great deal better than that. Um, in terms of the quality, I mean, you looking on the computer monitor and comparing to sort of shots of exactly the same subject material taken at the same time from the Galaxy Note you can see a lot less kind of detail preservation uh, in the shots from the Razer compared to the Galaxy Note. The Razer also did have in its favour a slightly more natural colour reproduction um, although many people will actually prefer the slightly saturated shots that they'll get uh, from from the Galaxy handsets. If I just put my Galaxy down here for a second and take some snapshots of it, I just wanted to demonstrate one thing that's really, really good about this handset. And that's the shot to shot time. As you can see here, it's virtually instantaneous. I can take, you know, I'm not having autofocus issues because my hands are unsteady. I can take kind of a shot a second with this thing and that's just um, just a stunning stunning result and probably the best I've found yet even a bit quicker than um, HTC Sensation and they crowed a lot about the shot to shot time on that handset if we jump into video one thing that's really great about video on this handset is that the 1080p mode and I'm currently in 1080p so if we look at the little hand here on Clove and check out the size there you can see what it looks like on the screen if we do the same thing in the Galaxy S2, if we jump into the camera and the S2, we get a video, if we look at the same thing, and you know, there you go. Um, you can actually see that it's just a bit larger, and that's because the Galaxy S you know, has a zoomed field of view. 1080p video recording that actually makes it quite difficult to frame shots and um, isn't quite ideal. I mean there's lots of other good things about 1080p video capture on the Note and the Galaxy S2 but that zoomed field of view is, is less than ideal and uh, the Droid Razor doesn't have that which is really great. Uh, in terms of the video capture itself, uh, the quality again, not capturing 
or it's well, certainly not preserving as much detail as the Galaxy handsets. Um, but very good, nevertheless. Um, I think most users will probably be quite happy with with the camera on this thing. So before I move on the camera, one thing I guess worth mentioning is have had the occasional glitch in the camera, have had the occasional force close here and there. Um, so it doesn't quite offer the stability I've seen in, in other Android handsets. Um, so just worth bearing in mind, and you know, I'm sure that Motorola will address that with a, with a wee hotfix uh, in the coming weeks. Finally, I really just wanted to have a look at the browser itself. So this is the stock Android browser, and it's really quite nice on the screen here. Better one of the inbuilt bookmarks. You can see the custom uh, bookmarks thing there, and they use a similar thing in the gallery app actually. This kind of view, which is really quite nice. Let's go into the default mobile view. How annoying! But I can't actually see an option there to change it. And so this, of course, this is the bugbear for many of the. Uh, Android handsets in terms of the team to default. To the mobile user agent, which is a bit of annoyance when you've got a screen that's you've got a high enough resolution to perfectly adequately display desktop versions of websites. So here we're going to the desktop version of the Engadget. You can see it's loading pretty quickly and I expect They've kind of optimised the browser for dual cores, like the other manufacturers offering dual core Android, Android handsets at the moment. Um, so one of the cores will be loading the page, and rendering the page, and the other other core will be uh, running scripts. If we look at it closely, probably not going to tell with the camera here, but Pentile noticeable here. And if we turn it to portrait. That small text is really, really quite illegible. Whereas I know I'd be able to read that, um, albeit with difficulty because it's, it's small, but would be able to probably read that on the Galaxy S2 and certainly the Note. Um, if we double tap to zoom, we'll of course get reflow on the text. And then if we zoom some more, you notice that pinch zoom is pretty smooth, not quite as smooth as what the Galaxy handsets have been able to attain, but quite smooth. And when you do that, you notice it doesn't reflow, but if you double tap then, it will... See if I can get it to work. Slightly unusual implementation of reflow. I can do it for you now. But usually, because it's too, too small a stub, uh, usually what happens is actually We've got our one level of zoom there, and it's reflowed nicely. And if we zoom up, no reflow. And usually, actually, if you double tap when it's zoomed in, it'll reflow at that level. So, kind of slightly unusual implement. I wish they would actually have dynamic reflow. There we go. So, you can zoom to whatever level you like, but you've got to zoom in and double tap it. And as I've amply demonstrated just now, it's not always as easy to do as what you might like. Um, I've also tried some flash video out here in this browser and it's great, it'll run even 720p without a problem. And this is a Vimeo video I think which is HTML5, so that's an entirely different beast but of course still supported by the Android native browser. So if we exit out of there, um, happy to say that browsing is a good experience on this phone, providing you're not spending all your time trying to read fully zoomed out text with the pen tile screen. Of course the, the, the small deficiencies that you can find in the browser there, things like the lack of persistent desktop user agent uh, or the lack, lack of proper dynamic reflow on things like pinch zooming and stuff, those can all be fixed with a third party browser. I've been using Opera Mobile for a long time and I'm very happy with that as a replacement for stock. It'll do flash and plays it just as well as the stock browser. In addition to having better handling of tabs uh, and better, better reflow of text, so just slightly better experience all around, I think, on the Android handsets at the moment. Although with Ice Cream Sandwich just around the corner and a lot of revisions to the browser there, I guess I may soon be reverting to stock again. So uh, 
as you might expect, I'm looking forward to the release of the Galaxy Nexus in the coming weeks to try that one out and compare it to some of these other great Android handsets that are out there at the moment. One of which, of course, is Motorola's, Motorola's Razor, or Droid Razor if you're in the States. Um, really is an extremely good handset. It has some deficiencies in some areas where it doesn't stand up to some of its contemporaries, um, but if you pick on certain areas of any phone, you'll find that, for instance, in the Galaxy S2, um, you know, the quality of music playbacks are a significant step backwards from the Motorola Razor here. Um, so it, it certainly has some challenges compared to its contemporaries, but nevertheless it's an extremely good handset. And as I say, the, the physical design of this thing is just absolutely remarkable. Um, how they could fit everything to this amazingly thin shell, how good it feels in the hand, uh, the quality of the materials. And trust me, I've tried very hard to scratch this Kevlar with my fingernail, um, but have not succeeded as yet. And I haven't been going to try scratching it with anything more than more than a fingernail at the moment. But for a day-to-day -day sort of scuff and tum scuff and tumble and day-to-day -day wear, uh, I suspect this phone will hold up extremely well, perhaps better than all others. Uh, so lots of positives, particularly in terms of the physical design. I think uh, Motorola engineers have done a fantastic job of that. Um, and if you can live with the Pentel screen, if you've seen the Galaxy S screen, you know that that wasn't a problem for you. Uh, and if video playback is a massively important thing for you, uh, then the Droid Razor is a, is a handset that is very, very well worth your while to look at. Uh, so that's NZ Tech Creek. Uh, usually resident at AndroidNZ.net, but here today to do this uh, brief video review for Clove for Motorola's new handset, the Motorola Razor, which of course you can pick up at clove.co.uk. Uh, that's Clove Technologies who are just absolutely the best in the business in terms of online sales of the latest and greatest handsets. So if you want to get the latest and greatest at a great price and with absolutely the best customer service I've found anywhere on the net, uh, then don't go further than Clove. Um, you see the URL just behind the razor here as well. So yeah, don't don't forget to head over to Clove and check out what they've got for you. Not just handsets, of course, but accessories and everything else. Uh, so that's NZ Tech Freak here with the Motorola Razor and signing off for the Clove blog.